Hi, I'm Graham from Blackmagic Design, and today I'd love to give you a status update on the Ursa Mini 4.6K and Micro Cinema digital film cameras. As you know, we've been working hard to get these new cameras into production and the back orders filled. The good news is that both models of camera are now shipping. However, over the last few months, we've been struggling with the global shutter feature of these cameras, and it's been holding up our ability to ship them. The problems we've been having with the global shutter are different between the cameras. However, we've been working extremely hard on the issues. As performance is not to the level we've been striving for, we've decided to ship the camera without the global shutter feature. This is extremely upsetting for us, as we really wanted to produce a high dynamic range camera that also had a global shutter in an all-in-one design. However, in reality, cinema photographers have been using the camera in all kinds of projects over the last couple of months, and the results have been incredible. This is great, and we want to start shipping the cameras to customers so they can start working with them. The 15 stops of wide dynamic range and the high frame rate capabilities of the rolling shutter are where the camera really shines and it produces amazing results. So what does this mean for the Ursa Mini camera lineup now? Well, what it means is that we now have two very different models of Ursa Mini. What we originally intended was for the Ursa Mini 4K to be the entry level model and the Ursa Mini 4.6K would be the higher end model with more features. Now they are really two different types of cameras and you can choose Ursa Mini 4K if you want global shutter and Ursa Mini 4.6K if you need wide dynamic range. The Ursa Mini 4K is a global shutter model and it can do global shutter in 4K up to 60 frames per second. This model is perfect for fast action sports type shooting. This model can record global shutter up to 60 frames per second and it's not limited to 30 frames per second in global shutter like the 4.6K model would have been. The Ursa Mini 4.6K model is a high dynamic range model of camera for high end digital film work with its extremely wide latitude of 15 stops of dynamic range. The Ursa Mini 4K does not have the wide latitude as the 4.6K model has. However, the 4.6K model also had reduced dynamic range when it was switched to global shutter. In many ways, the Ursa Mini 4.6K camera was very similar to the 4K camera when switched to global shutter, as the specifications in this mode were similar. So now you just have to choose between two different models depending on the type of work you do. You can choose either global shutter or wide dynamic range models. The great news is we've been getting a lot of pressure from high-end customers who have been beta testing the camera and who are loving the images from it. These testers understand that wide latitude is the most important feature and the new colour science we have in the 4.6K model has been really impressing them. Of course, if you have a back order and you don't like this feature change, then we understand and we fully support you if you want to alter your order. We're shipping now and we're building cameras as fast as we can get sensors into the factory so we can fill back orders. However, even with this change, there's been nothing done that limits the high-end capability of this camera and the work it's been doing has been amazing. As an engineer, I've always felt that my job is to build the stage you perform on. But until we ship a product, we never really know what kind of stage it is. But this camera is truly amazing, and the images are just so filmic. Anyone can throw lots of pixels behind a lens, but what we really wanted to do is create true digital film. The beta test cameras have been so well received that they've already been heavily used on national campaigns and on feature film shoots. I've included some of the work that the beta testers have been doing, as I think it's nice to be able to demonstrate what's possible. It's very exciting. Here you can see a shot by Bobby Hewitt, and what's amazing about this is the dynamic range and the images. The concert just looks so organic and filmic. Here's a shot by Pascal Delay, and you can really see how the images look so film-like, and the colour science in the camera has really brought out the textures. In this shot by James Tonkin, we're amazed at how the camera handled the direct sunlight and the, and the natural illumination of the scene itself. With this shot by Noam Kroll, what's exciting is the images were just shot handheld, and the beauty of the location has really been enhanced by the film look of the images. The work the beta testers have been doing is amazing. And when we see shots like this, all the pain and hard work in building the camera just melts away. We've just added a gallery page to the Ursa Mini website. So please visit that site so you can see some of the work the beta testers have been doing. To really experience the camera though, we went out ourselves and did a test shoot. We really wanted to experience firsthand actually using the camera. The beta testers have made a lot of comments about the camera's great ergonomics. So we wanted to go out and do a professional shoot and see for ourselves. We use the camera in as many ways possible, including handheld, on tripods, car shots, dolly shots, on a gimbal, on a drone, but always with a very small crew. It handled it all amazingly well, and it matched what the beta testers said that it's an amazingly versatile camera punching far above its weight. Some of the scenes we shot as part of the shoot were interior scenes with huge amounts of direct sunlight outside and darker shadow areas inside. This would usually require large amounts of lighting inside to get the lumens up to match the bright exteriors but the Ursa Mini 4.6K handled it really well with no extra lights in this case. We've posted on our website the results, and we've shot a short video in various lighting and environmental conditions. If you go to the Ursa Mini page on our website, 
you can view the short film, and I think it really demonstrates what the camera can do. We also shot a video of the making of this short film, and you can see interviews with the team who are involved in the shoot. Both of these videos can be downloaded in Ultra HD, so you can see all the details clearly. Some of the shots are very tough to do, such as the night scenes and the indoor shots, and you can see that the camera handled them easily. Both these short films are posted on their website now, as well as three original RAW clips from the camera, so you can download and grade them for yourself. I feel you can only really get a true understanding of the shot when you can actually grade the RAW footage yourself. These clips are direct from the camera untouched, so please download the clips and give them a try in DaVinci Resolve, and you can see what looks you can get for yourself. Because these are RAW files, it's a good idea to download and use the free version of DaVinci Resolve to view the clips so they're not clipped. Lastly, we've been receiving a lot of questions about the camera, and I thought it'd be really good to answer some of these in this video. I think the most common question we get asked is why 4.6K for the camera resolution? The answer to that is we need enough resolution to compensate for the color frequency losses due to the Bayer color filter on the sensor. With a Bayer pattern, you lose a bit of color resolution. DaVinci Resolve is great for recovering most of it, but the little extra resolution solves that problem completely. However, we did not want to go up too much in resolution, otherwise the RAW files become very big, and it really drives up the cost of post-production. There's a little point building the camera if you can't afford to do the post-production work on the files that the camera creates. Another question is how long can you record 4.6K RAW on CFast cards? The answer is on a 256GB card, you should get around 30 minutes in compressed RAW, or about 13 minutes in uncompressed RAW. This increases if you use a compressed format such as ProRes, where you can get 40 minutes on a card in the ProRes 42HQ format in Ultra HD. We've been asked if you can change RS and autofocus on EF lenses, and the answer is yes you can and the camera will fully control those lenses. A very common question is what is the maximum frame rate Ursa Mini will record? The answer is 120 frames a second when doing windowed HD, or 60 frames per second in 4.6K. The next most common question is what is the cropping you get when you're using HD window mode to shoot up to 120 frames per second. The crop factor in this situation is 2.4 compared with the Super 35mm frame size. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second or less, then you can switch to full frame and still record to HD. Of course, nobody likes to use a crop factor, so we recommend using the full frame of that large 4.6K sensor when you're shooting under 60 frames per second. We get asked a lot about meter data, and the meter data can be edited on the camera's touchscreen, and it's embedded in all the files recorded. Some customers have asked us if the camera really is 15 stops of dynamic range, as it seems too large to be true. But yes, the camera will do 15 stops of dynamic range. It really is quite amazing in real life to use this, as setting exposure is really simple as you can almost not get it wrong. We were shooting at night with a scene with a burst of fire, and you can see details on the camera screen that we couldn't see with our eyes. It was amazing. We get asked a lot about dual card mode, and how does that work? What the dual card setting does is allow us to record raw frames across two CFast cards to increase the speed that we can record at. You might want to do this because you want to use a higher frame rate or you want to use uncompressed RAW. What's intelligent about dual card recording is every second frame is recorded into each card, but the audio is recorded into both. What this means is if you lose a card, you don't lose the shot, as you still have the other card, but just half the frame rate. Some customers have asked us why the B4 lens mount can only be mounted on the PL model of the camera. The answer to this is that the PL mount can be removed for shimming the PL mount lenses. This gives us the perfect opportunity to mount a B4 lens in the place of the PL mount, and to use the HD window feature of the sensor to match the B4 uh, lens aperture size. The PL models of Ursa Mini have a B4 broadcast lens connector, so you can plug in a PL or a B4 lens control cable into this connection. The lens control connection supports both digital as well as the older analog lens control protocols, and it'll also power the lens. I hope you found these questions useful, and you've been impressed with the shots from this camera as we are. Our short test film is online now, so please go to the Ursa Mini page on our website to check it out. I also hope you now understand a little bit more about what we've been working on so hard over the last few months. We're very thankful for your patience as we've developed Ursa Mini and have worked so hard to bring true digital film to everyone. This is the kind of thing that Blackmagic Design was originally started to do, and I'm glad we were able to keep working towards that goal. We're so happy that the testers love the images, colour science, latitude, and the ergonomics of the camera. It's so humbling to be part of such amazing work. Thanks for watching.